Welcome to Learning Lua. Today we're going to look at file input and output as well as standard I.O. using the Lua scripting language. The I.O. library is composed of six essential tools. There are actually more commands available to us in the library than these, but we're going to focus on these six. Let's begin by looking at the I.O. read and write and being able to receive information from the keyboard or output it in this example, we're using the standard in and standard out. Standard in expects to receive information from the keyboard, whereas standard out will output to your display. So in this particular instance, I've got IO write asking the question, how old are you? And then we're going to store the response from the user in the variable answer using IO read. So in my output, I've got it asking, how old are you? So I can respond. And that takes us straight into our if then loop, continuing to do IO write for our standard output. Because we have the print command available to us, most people do not use IO write for outputting to the display. IO write has different overhead to it and works a little bit different than the print. Print automatically converts information to string and outputs information in a much more readable format, such as allowing us to use commas to insert tabs and other formatting techniques that are much easier to use when debugging inside of your application. Using IOWrite and IOread are usually more directed towards working with files which takes us back to where we began. IO input allows us to specify the file that will be read from. IO output allows us to specify the file that we will write to. We can also use IO open in place of input or output to create a file and specify the read or write mode. And then we also have available to us IO close. In this example, we've got IO output creating a file called temp file, and that will be stored wherever we are saving our file to. It will automatically create this temp file in that default folder. We're going to write out the number 42, then close our output, then we're going to specify the same file for input, and read from it. Read has several different parameters. We can read all the entire file, we can read an, a line, or other details. Read has several different parameters. We can read the entire file by using the all command. We can read a specific line using the line parameter. We can specify number to read a number. And we can also just simply give a numeric value, which will read a string of up to that number of characters. So as you can see with this one, we are writing the temp, creating the temp file. We're writing to that temp file. By default, IO write looks for whatever was last specified as the output file. So IO output specifies temp file, so any subsequent writes that we do will automatically try to write to the temp file. IO close is just to make sure that the file has been closed for our temp file, and then we can we can specify our read file using IO input and pull in the entire file and print the information that we receive for from it in the variable info. IO open has three modes available to us, actually four modes available to us. We have read and we have write and then we have binary. Binary is special use and is combined with the read and write so we can have read or R, W or write and we can also have RB for read binary and WB for write binary. So we have four possible modes with the IO open. You might wonder what's the difference between a read, a write, or a read binary, write binary. Read and write create text files. So basic ASCII text will be output using a standard read or write. If you are working with a file that has any kind of binary information stored in it, then you need to use the binary tool as part of it. For example, I was working on a project using the Corona SDK and I needed to be able to copy a file from the resource directory into a document directory on a mobile device. Because it was stored as a database, a binary copy was required. In that case, I could read it as a binary file and write it as a binary file and the database would work fine. 
If I tried to do a straight text read using R or W, that created a problem in the database and the database was did not work after that. So that required a binary read and a binary write. So here's a standard open situation. We can go in and we create the file IO open temp file with a W to write it. And then I can use it utilizing that file name. I can tell it to write specifically to that file, using, which in this case I send it the text hello world. This means that you can have more than one file open at a time, that you can read and write different information to different files depending on your needs. All you need to do is specify the file name and be able to store that and pass that to your write or to your read information. Do make sure you close the file after you're done writing to it. That forces a flush of any cache so that it is automatically written out to the hard drive or whatever the storage of that device is. Of course, reading and writing files is very useful for any game development or uh, large projects, being able to store a player's progress inside the game or store client information. There's thousands and thousands of uses. IO read and IO write are incredibly valuable to you as a developer. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 